Hi everyone. Uh, I want uh, I want to show you how I work with uh, uh, real life uh, data uh, data sets. Yes, like like I do it uh, in uh, at my job. And uh, for example, I will take uh, the e-commerce data from Kaggle. Uh, I will put link uh, in the description. Um, that's uh, the retail data set where you can uh, find some transactions of e users. Uh, they uh, they buy some uh, some goods from uh, the UK uh, retailer. So we will work with that data. And uh, to start, I I will uh, download uh, that data. Uh, to download it, you must have a Kaggle account. Okay, and um, I uh, I will use my uh, repository, which I created uh, to uh, work with data. It is very convenient because it uh, made uh, on Docker, and uh, uh, all heavy uh, liftings uh, is done by you. Actually, I uh, I did it. Yeah, I I write uh, I I wrote this uh, that, uh, that code. So. Um, I will start from creating the folder on my desktop, which is always empty, you know. Uh, and I will call it uh, retail data. Okay. And then I will open a terminal uh, at that, uh, at, uh, that uh, folder. Uh, new terminal at folder from services. Very, very uh, convenient function. And uh, I will start uh, to work uh, with it uh, in VS Code. So I type code dot. That will open VS Code. Okay. Now go full screen. And uh, I open a terminal here, um, like uh, retail uh, retail data. Okay. And uh, the next step, I will uh, download. Uh, my uh, code like this okay and uh, uh, I uh, want to remove that uh, sample data which is uh, included to uh, this repo to just show how to work with data yeah and put uh, the downloaded data in there so that's uh, I unzip it with double click and uh, just go to that folder where it is here data uh, okay <laughs> it uh, for some reasons for some reasons I can't copy paste okay the data is here uh, and now uh, I um, uh, I uh, want to start the containers. For that, I'll type docker compose up. Uh, before uh, shooting this video, I uh, run a docker system prune on my machine to delete all docker data to uh, give you a feeling of how it should, it should look like uh, if you install uh, this uh, for the first time. Yes, it... Uh, it uh, has to download all the data from uh, internet and um, yes uh, before uh, before uh, running uh, docker compose yes make sure you have docker installed and uh, running on your machine yeah so you should have this whale uh, on top of uh, your screen if you're using mac so it uh, make sure you have it so this process, uh, this process takes uh, a long time. Uh, it takes about uh, 30 minutes. Uh, depends on your internet connection and uh, the power of your machine. So I will, I will skip yes uh, this process and come back to you when it's uh, uh, ready. Uh, after download uh, is uh, finished. Uh, it uh, starts to extract the packages, and it takes some time too. After all extract, uh, all extraction is done, and uh, all uh, 
containers downloaded, they start and you see something like that. And uh, uh, there is also uh, the image for Postgres uh, was downloaded. And after uh, that, you will see uh, the screen like this. And here uh, you uh, can find the link, yes, to uh, use uh, your, job, uh, your Jupyter. So uh, command click it and open uh, in a browser. And uh, here we have uh, the running uh, Jupyter. Here is the uh, notebook with all examples. And I uh, usually use it as kind of uh, code, uh, code snippets, yes, because uh, uh, the, uh, it, it has useful, uh, useful piece of code, how to work with Postgre in the, in the, this repository. So let's start, uh, uh, let's start with new uh, notebook. And uh, uh, now I will upload the data to the Postgre. Uh, I uh, like to write it in separate uh, notebooks, yes, to have my code base uh, manageable. Because uh, I have one notebook for uh, data upload, one notebook for data pre-processing, and uh, other notebooks for modeling or uh, explanatory data analysis, etc. <clears throat> and um, first of all, I will read read the data. Uh, Im uh, import uh, pandas spd, uh, then df equals uh, pd read uh, sql. Uh, and uh, the pass to the data folder. You, you can use tab here and find, yeah, that's the data. Uh, one access uh, require connection. Oh, uh, oh sorry, read, uh, read CSV, of course. Uh, and uh, here I have the uh, Unicode error. To fix it, I just uh, ha I just have to specify the encoding of that file. Encoding equals, uh, and I know that it's, it is CP1252, and now it's okay. Let's see, I have uh, about 500,000 rows. Uh, let's see at the top. Okay, and uh, here is uh, here is the data set. It's just uh, transactions, yes. And uh, uh, since it's big, yes, I want to upload it uh, to uh, Postgres. And I uh, usually find uh, I usually find it convenient to uh, process data in uh, SQL, yes, uh, instead of Python, because uh, databases are very efficient with a. Uh, uh, big data sets, yes, and even on your local machine, you uh, will not run out of your uh, RAM, yes, uh, because you have limited memory. And when you work uh, with Python, you can uh, run out of memory with big data sets. So, uh, and in real life, yes, usually that kind of data stored in a, a, a database. So I will show you, yes, it's a very uh, real life uh, scenario. <clears throat> and uh, first of all, we should check uh, the uh, data types because before uploading to Postgres, I uh, have to uh, convert some uh, some types. And I see that uh, the data has uh, column names uh, written in uh, camel case, and uh, I don't like it. I like to work with you know straight. Uh, lowercase uh, names. So let's convert them. I will use list comprehension. Call lower in a call uh, uh, for call in sorry in uh, df columns. Yes, and uh, I will just replace it. Columns equals yeah. Now the uh, they have had, yes, I could check. Okay. Uh, and uh, convert uh, convert uh, the um, uh, the date. I want to convert the date because that's only type I want to have in special uh, in special uh, day, uh, data type. So 
first of all, I will check uh, what type of date uh, does it have. So I will uh, I will take small samples and look like uh, see if here I have to uh, have uh, 26. Yes, uh, it's uh, it is a day. Yes, definitely. And uh, also uh, if I see 18 here, yes, I have uh, the time in uh, 24 hours format. So now I could uh, write uh, the proper uh, formatting string and I will use um, uh, the uh, function from pandas uh, which is called uh, to date time. Very convenient function. I use it all the time because when you work with Python, uh, Python uh, dates, yes, you always should import date, date time, etc. Yes, and uh, when uh, in pandas uh, you have that function uh, ready for you and they works just amazing. See, uh, I will test. Uh, at first, I will test, yes, how this function uh, works. I will copy it like that. Uh, it uh, it converts uh, it uh, converts it uh, correct yes but I want to be sure that it converts correct so I uh, specify format uh, here format equals and I write uh, months day year uh, hour and uh, minute. Let's check. Same, uh, same, but now I am sure that uh, everything uh, is uh, correct. And I will uh, apply uh, this uh, function to the whole column of invoice date scene. And I will just uh, replace that column with uh, formatted data. Voice, uh, invoice date, I better, I better copy it. Uh, and copy it again. Uh, no, equals. Now I copy that function and replace uh, and replace this uh, hard coded string with my column. So that's it. Very very convenient function. Yes, and now I have uh, invoice date in date time uh, date type and uh, just. To be sure, yes. See, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, different now. Okay, so the next step is uploading to uh, the Postgres, and uh, I will use the piece of code here. Boom! Upload to PostgreSQL, and I will change the name to I will call the table sales. And uh, before before uploading such big uh, tables, yes, you better uh, start with a small sample to make sure it uh, everything works fine. I, I, I just take uh, 100 first rows of that uh, table. Seems it's okay and I will uh, check it uh, by selecting it from the database. Look, uh, and I should change just a uh, name here. Sales, sales. From one to sales. Check. And um, I will try to select first 10 rows. Oh, uh, I should import, uh, I should import uh, the uh, uh, Psycho PG2 library because it's necessary to work with uh, Postgres. And uh, now select SQL. Yes, it's uh, uh, it's fine. So now I uh, I want to upload the whole table. And um, let me show you something. Uh, for example, uh, if now, yes, I want to upload uh, the 10 rows, yes, just for a test, and it should replace the old table. Let's check if it works. And it, it, uh, it should be already done, but it is not. Uh, 
Uh, that's because uh, we made a request to uh, Postgres here and uh, the table is locked. Yes, so before uh, recreating table, we should unlock it. And to do that, uh, you uh, should kill uh, PG process. Uh, I will show you how to do it. So even if you try to stop uh, the cell now, yes, it just stuck. So I have a special a special notebook for this occasion, and you can uh, find everything here. So first of all, we are checking what's uh, what processes are running now. Yes, and uh, you see here is the uh, uh, select. Uh, from sales. And now I just kill all the process because when I work with my local uh, Postgre, which is created uh, only for that project, yes, I just don't care about uh, other users, yes, and kill all process. So if you're working with some real database, yes, you should be careful with uh, killing all process because uh, another user uh, can lo uh, lose their uh, data. And now see, uh, it stopped because uh, because of uh, uh, the process was killed it's uh, uh, immediately unstuck and uh, i will uh, i will do it again yes to check now it works see and i have uh, and if i uh, delete this yes i have only only 10 rows okay so uh, now i want to upload the whole table and uh, before doing that, I uh, kill uh, the process, all the process. Again. Okay. Uh, now uh, I delete head from here and uh, start to upload. It uh, it will take uh, I don't know maybe five minutes. It's finished, and uh, now I will uh, once again check if everything is fine uh, limit uh, i will i will run uh, the count here just to make sure all rows have been uploaded yes seems uh, seems okay um so now that table is ready uh, to, for uh, being analyzed and we will start do it in the next video uh, and I will start with uh, creating uh, the uh, sales report, monthly sales report. Uh, we will find uh, how many customers uh, we have each month, how many orders uh, they are making and uh, how much money they are spending. Uh, Okay, I, I will create the repo on GitHub for this video and you can find all these uh, notebooks in uh, this repo. I will include it uh, in the uh, description. Bye. Uh, have fun.